Well, they estimate just in the state of Indiana that there's about a thousand, right around a thousand, that are sitting on shelves in, in corners, offices, or at the, you know, the universities being studied or whatever, or buried, you know, unidentified yeah. buried. Well, that's that's the problem. Is we're not using we're we're not centralized. I'm not even sure that that Illinois goes outside of Illinois. Hmm. I know for a while they didn't. Everything was dumped into their state database, and it was not shared nationally. Okay, this was '83. I was working for the ambulance service, and our station was just up the road. I didn't know any of it was going on. Wow. Had no clue. Ball okay, so what do you want to know about Adam Brad and or Charlene? I would like to know anything that you are willing to tell me, show me, let me photograph, any of it. Whatever information you want out there. Well, let's let's start from the beginning then. I put the office as the corn in 2008, I believe it was. And when I took when I took office, I was I was the first coroner in in, in 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 Newton County history to have an office. Coroners just handed stuff off to coroner, and 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 you know that's the kind of the good old boy way of doing things. The the record keeping part of it was just you know okay you're the coroner now so here's everything, you know here's and, and you keep it at your house. So I demanded that the county give me an office, and they did. They were very 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 cordial about it and I showed up at the the, the soon-to-be office which was just rooms at the time I hadn't gotten any furniture or anything I showed up there one day and he had brought in all of the records that he had in his house and just they were just piled in the room oh my God. you know bankers box upon bankers box upon bankers box because we had the aircraft go down here a few years back and killed 68 so we've got all of the records from that so there were just literally like 20 cases of 20 boxes of just nothing but records from that but I picked up this this one box and I was and it actually ready to get, yeah it rattled instead of and I'm like man this this doesn't sound quite you know there's something wrong here and I opened it up and it was bones and the only thing on the box was victim three and it had victim three written in the corner and there was another box that said victim four I'm like oh crap this isn't good and then there was a, a garbage bag that had tape around the top of it and a little piece of paper sticking out that said, uh, I don't even remember what it had on it now. I think it just had Newton County on it. And it was Bones as well. The two banker's boxes were the two boys. And the, the bag was, was the girl. And at, at that point, I was like, oh, what do we do now? And, you know, there was just a, a little corner of piece of paper in one of the boxes that had a a number on it, 13 dash whatever. And 13, I knew, was District 13, which is the Lowell Post. So I called up the Lowell Post and asked them to run this number. You know, can you tell me what this number goes to? And they're like, well, that's that's an old case. It's closed. There's, there's, you don't need to worry about any of that anymore. I said, no, you misunderstand. I've got the bones. And there's silence on the other end for, for a couple seconds. And then they're like, hold on, we're going to put you through to the detective bureau. <laughs> oh and, and, and that started this whole train of rolling. Uh, but yeah, we, we took, we went from banker's boxes to, to um, Tupperware or Rubbermaid, whatever. And, and that's what the kids, Can I? That, that, that's what the kids went in. And we took them down to, uh, my state police counterpart and I took them down to um, Indianapolis to the University of Indy, and Dr. Naraki did another forensic anthropological <laughs> Dr. Pless did the first one. That was back in the 80s. You know, so, you know, obviously things had changed uh, technology-wise. And we, we, wise. you know, that, that started, that started the, you know, that started the investigation, really. That, that's, you know, then, then once the report came in and we knew There's the original autopsy report that was done by Dr. Pless. 
which doesn't give you much. And then when Dr. Naraki was done, we not only had dental charting, but we had a complete and thorough you know, report on height, estimated weight, you know, everything. I think I have a copy of that. I think I found that one online. Along with, you know, all of the different, you know, the various wounds, which that doesn't make any difference for identification, but I mean, he did, he did a super job of, of the anthropological studies. Then it was, you know, people started asking, well, do you have dental charting done, good dental charting? Because apparently a forensic anthropologist does dental charting different than a dentist, a dentist yeah. who does it different than... For, uh, there's, from there's so a forensic odontologist? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I took them to my dentist, my personal dentist. And had him do and, the whole x-ray scan? And, and he, he did. He, he did x-rays and he did charting for me. All for nothing. Yeah, I've seen those. But then, let's see. The boys were found first. They were found in 83. And they were found... These are all mixed up. I just grabbed and ran. That barn, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm hoping I have a picture of the barn. And Adam was that Larry buried him apart from the white yeah. victims because he was because he was racist. Larry said he was black, though, didn't he? Yeah. And I would expect that. Well, even, even if you're really racist, you can probably tell the difference between black and Hispanic. Well, but you know, this is years later, so. Who True, knows? and he, he could be mixed too. Can't rule that out either. Certainly. There's what the it's mushroom hunters that found them, and there's what they found. That's some of. Can't hardly. No, I've got a I'm not even here. sure what I'm looking at. Here's here. a better one. Here's a better one. There's victim one. There's victim two, which those guys were identified. Victim three, which is. Brad and victim four is back over in here somewhere. He was driving north on 63 to, to 41 north at the junction of, of 41, which actually 41, 63 and 41 are the same road for a while. So that's that's where he picked up Adam, and he said all he says is, "I saw a black guy hitchhiking." I think he was in his late teens or early 20s, and if you take the interstate that goes runs right into it and, and take it east, it runs you right into Terre Haute, yeah. and that's where he was picked up, was at, at that intersection of 41 and, and, well, at the intersection of 41 and 63, near whatever, I don't remember what interstate that is. He liked 41. When I made a grave for this individual, I separated him from the other three bodies because I did not think it was proper to bury this person next to the other three Caucasian men. Nicknamed Dwayne, the Hendricks County John Doe is an outlier even among Eiler Does in Indiana. Many sources do not even mention him as Eiler's victim if they even list him at all. Freed to Kill states he was less decomposed than Richard Wayne. The victim he was found with who went missing in March of 83 and who was identified by a bus ticket on his person. There is still no composite of Duane, so I presume one was never made, and there is no mention of DNA or dental that I can find listed, nor information on the disposition of his remains. The Hendricks County Coroner's Office has not responded to my email asking about Duane. Again, I know you said that one of them, I think Jasper County, was just pummeled. No, it wasn't. Well, I mean, pummeled makes it sound like he he was beaten to death. He wasn't. No, I mean, um, from, you know, just da damage, post-mortem right, damage. Yeah, yeah, he had, the, the farmer, I mean, he was dumped in a field, and, and obviously the farmer didn't see him, so he's yeah. disking up his field, and but I, I, I'm not sure how long it was through the disking that he realized there was, I mean, he found... That it was bone and not yeah, rock? Well, he found clothes, you know, clothing that was stuck in the... In the Rotor in the blades, disc, yeah. and, and he stopped and realized that, oops, there's bones here. 
it looks like the Jasper Doe was picked up. Yeah, he, he near was 41. he was dubbed the Highway Killer. He used 41 and 57 was his routes of travel. Now the Jasper County one is is an odd one, and I I pleaded when when we first took these cases. When I first got these, I found out that Jasper County had one, and we took his and got he had kept a jawbone, so we got DNA. DNA's in the system for him, but there's no, there really wasn't enough left of him to, to, to do an anthropological study on, because he'd been in the field for so long and the farmer had ran over him with his implements mm -hmm. and such. Um, but he was off the beaten path for Larry. Larry dumped him along 41. If, if you look at all of, the, all of his victim, the majority of them were right off the highway. I mean, right off the highway. This one was found out in the middle of nowhere, over in Jasper County. It was just an odd... But Larry confessed to it, so we know it was Larry's doings. Back on that one, if, if you take the road where this guy was found, and you shoot straight east, it takes you out of St. Joseph College. And I kept telling Andy, I said, you need to go back and, and figure out you know, the year that this kid went missing, which we know because we have the, the confessions. We know pretty much when he was, well, we know when, you know, I mean, the exact time he was picked up and find out what, what kid... What, stop the going? Yeah. Be, because the, 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 the college the isn't... high the, schools, too. The college isn't going to say, you know, they're not going to file a missing persons report. Somebody doesn't show up, you know, after right. a semester break or something, and they just write them off. So this kid could be from somewhere in southern Indiana or whatever that was going to college up here. He's thumbing a ride back. Larry picks him up. Says, "Okay, and the, you know." And the kid's like, "Well, you know, I'm going to college over here. Can you take me to the college?" Sure. And then when the drugs kick in, he kills him. That's my theory, makes and it sense. makes sense. Yeah. But he will not go to. And now that the college closed, I'm not even sure how you would get. I, I would rather just go to the registrar's records and say, you know, there's got. You know, kids, kids do it all the time. They, they, they go to school, they decide, you know, I, I don't like it or whatever, and they just, you know, they don't notify the school, they just stop showing up. So you find that kid that just didn't show up. It, it, it's one of those that, you know, everything just seems to be hit and miss anymore. It, it's just, it's just so hard. One, it's hard to get people to talk. Two, it's hard to get people interested. And... and and this happened so long ago that people's memories are, you know, I've had people, witnesses, that, you know, said, oh, yeah, I saw the smoke from, from a fire out that way at that, you know, on that day. Barry Baines, who is a little old black guy from, from Hopkins Park, was over fishing in Beaver Creek, which is a little creek that runs through uh, Willow Slough. A lot of people go there and fish. And he stumbles upon these skeletons. And how he, I, I don't know, don't know the whole story there, because obviously this was a lot, of, a lot of years ago, but he had hooked one of the skulls, which was hers, and put it in the trunk of his car, and then he drove like a madman back over to Hopkins Park and got the Hopkins Park Town Marshal. I said, you know, there, there's bodies over there. So he calls Indiana and Indiana, you know, Newton County Sheriff's Department goes out there, and they find these bodies and stuff, but there's no head. And they're like, well, where in the world is the head? Well, they finally find the head two days later Down in a ditch, uh, just not even a quarter mile up the road on the Illinois side. Well, when they finally, they questioned Barry again, he admitted that he had hooked the, the skull, and he says, after all, you know, after, and he was, you know, this guy was believable. I mean, he, he was just, he was just petrified. He's like, I, I forgot that I put the skull in there when I opened my trunk. I found it. I was afraid I was going to get arrested, so I just threw it in the ditch. She, she was, she was, she was found with a, a guy. The guy was identified. They'd been shot. They'd both been shot. And, and then whoever shot him buried or threw tires on top of him and set the tires on fire. Tried to burn him up. Well, I know who he is, though. So he was married. He lived in St. Anne. Well, they identified him almost right away because that family lives just, just across the state line. The, the family that 
the, right, right down of the to guy, burning the tires. They just they just refuse, just adamantly refuse to talk to me. So I know they know who this girl was. They just won't tell us. And and to cross the state line to get information from them is nearly impossible because I worked with a state police officer when all this started. Uh, they assigned me a, a detective from the, the state police post, and even he couldn't get records from Illinois. They stonewalled him. She had very good dentition. The, the dental work she did have done was, was expensive. She had crowns and, and things, so that was, you know, that, that, that's not a poor person. She was wearing Jordache brand jeans, which back in the 80s, I don't know if they're expensive today, but I know back then they were. Patterson Dental Supply was the only one that made this particular machine. Back in 1988, only one known company made Cere Crown Machine. C E R E E. I, so I get I was just like some that. kind of ceramic crown machine. And that was Patterson Dental, and I contacted Patterson Dental and emailed a picture of the of the of the crown to them. And they said that, that it wasn't. Anything's worth a shot at this point. It'd be nice to get it, at least one of them, any of them home.